Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Cute to Tell Wagging, and today I want to talk to you guys about how to make raw feeding more affordable. So one aside, I have a cold, so I might sniffle a little bit, and I apologize in advance. Um, I belong to a local raw food co-op, and that is how I'm able to save money. I have four dogs. They weigh between 65 pounds and 83 pounds, and I also have a cat who is not currently on a raw food diet as much as I've been trying for the past two years, but he does eat soft food and freeze-dried raw, and I'm slowly adding in like a little bit of raw here and there just to see if he'll eat it. So far, so good, um, but not great. Anyway. When it comes to raw feeding, I know that raw feeding can be very expensive for some people. It really depends on where you live and what you have access to. In my experience, what I found is that until people show you where you can go and buy raw, it becomes a little overwhelming. When I was first to raw feeding or even DIY raw feeding and I would talk to other people, um, the only thing I knew about was pre-made raw. So the raw you would either order online or get at the um, the pet store. And that was really expensive when you have a lot of big dogs. Um, other people would tell me, oh no, I only spend $99 a month. You know, not that number exactly, but you know, they hardly spend anything. However, the resources that they had access to, I didn't have. So I wasn't picking up roadkill. I was, I didn't have um, a farm where I raised my own meat. I didn't have friends who had farms or hunters. It was all just a little overwhelming. And also since I was so new to raw feeding, I wasn't ready to butcher anything. So trying to find a nice middle ground was really important. And so that's why I was grateful when a local raw feeder introduced me to our co-op, which is Wazur. And I'll put the link to Wazur in the notes. So if you live in Washington or Oregon, definitely check them out. There's a low membership fee. It's just an annual fee. And then we as a community order in bulk. So one thing that I love about belonging to a co-op is that I have one source for everything I need. So I can get everything I need for my dog. So that is food, treats, supplements, dog beds, toys, everything for my cats or cat. I only have one cat. And um, it's really nice to just have one place to go and place an order. The um, downside to belonging to a co-op for me in the beginning was getting used to the orders because it's not like it's an online store where I can just order things as I need them. I had to wait until an order came up and get used to the flow of the orders. The other thing was that I had to go and buy a freezer because belonging to a co-op because we're ordering in bulk, we're placing large orders. So I'm ordering up to 200 pounds of meat at a time and I needed a place to store it. I also learned to save money. And so I sock aside a little bit of money every month because I also order, you know, big orders sometimes and then small orders other times. So for example, this summer I'll be placing a big order of emu and it's gonna cost me at least $400. So I'll be socking away 20 to $30 a month until the summer and then I can, you know, afford that order. Um, it's easy to become overwhelmed. It's easy to become like excited about all the options that are available to you. One thing that I've learned is that it's not important to feed your dog every single protein you discover. I found it important to set a top dollar amount. So I'm not going to go above $4 a pound when it comes to feeding my dogs. This helps me keep from going just completely crazy and all of a sudden finding my bank account on the low side because I spent way too much money on just a little bit of food because I wanted to try kangaroo. That really did happen and it was $10 a pound. I didn't do the math and I'm an accountant, so shame on me. So I say stick with what you know your dog can eat. I, uh, my dogs, I have access to so many proteins that it's really not necessary for me to try every single protein I discover. And also when you lose a protein, so recently I lost venison, it's not that heartbreaking because you have other options, but just keep it, you know, keep it reasonable because you don't want to um, empty out your bank account, as I said. So if you don't have access to a co-op, what do you do? So I made a list of um, places you can go, and I'm going to talk about the pros and cons based on my experience. You're going to see that so many people have opinions about these things because so many people are feeding raw, yay. So it's, I highly implore you to go to the raw feeding group of your choice. Raw Feeders Kicked Out Club is mine. And um, ask people, you know, where, what they're feeding their dog and where they're feed, you know, where they're getting their food from. 
And before we get started, I want to remind you guys, I have a book. It's called A Novice's Guide to Raw Feeding for Dogs, and it's available on Amazon. I encourage you to check it out. It's really great for people who are brand new to raw feeding. If you have bought it, do me a favor and head over to Amazon and leave a review. Five stars are the best. So what about your local butcher? One thing I found is that when I was looking into this is butchers aren't the same as what we think butchers are. It's not like they have a whole freezer full of meat that they're carving up. A lot of times they're getting the meat already carved at the butcher. But, you know, there are a lot of um, resources you can still get from a butcher. One, some of the butchers are starting to recognize that raw feeders exist and they're creating a line of food. The gr great side to that is, yay, another resource. The downside to that is a lot of people understand that we will spend extra money on our, on our food. And so they're pricing it at a premium rate. So it may be a little outside of your budget. If you want to work with a butcher, if you have a butcher in your area, give them a call and find out what do they do with the scraps. Because even if the meat comes to them already um, butchered, uh, they may trim it up for their customers. Find out what they do with those trims. If they're throwing it out, offer to take it off their hands. They may charge you for it, and, but hopefully they're only charging you like maybe a dollar a pound for it. I could afford that. Um, grocery stores. A lot of people shop for grocery stores. In fact, one of my best friends, Tina Brooks, gets a lot of stuff from a grocery store. One thing that she told me is that she went back and spoke to the meat manager and she places orders directly through him. She's not just going to the display and getting food. And I think that that's a brilliant idea. Um, the pros to going to a grocery store is that you can shop sales. You can pay attention and know what you're gonna get the cons, as far as my experience is from shopping at a grocery store, is that at my particular grocery store, the food is never frozen. It arrives thawed out, it sits thawed out, and um, that, for my dogs, increases the bacteria to an amount that's not very healthy for them. So yes, dogs do have a shorter digestive, uh, digestive tract. Dogs can handle more bacteria than humans, but they still have their limits. And my dogs got a lot of diarrhea from eating food from the grocery store. This was also because my dogs have a chicken intolerance and I was feeding them chicken. So six of one, half a dozen of the other, which leads me to another con of getting food at the grocery store. And again, this is based on my experience. You're limited in what you can, off, you can give your dog. So there's chicken, beef, turkey, and pork. The pork is pretty affordable. The chicken is pretty affordable. The beef is crazy expensive and the turkey is crazy expensive. So... It's just not something that I want to give to my dogs. And of course, you know, there's the issue of sourcing what those animals were fed, you know, are, is the meat at the grocery store mostly grain fed animals. And if you have a dog with severe allergies or inflammation, then those grain fed animals may contribute to that, which may cause an issue. So long story short, Rodrigo can't eat food from the um, grocery store because he has a food intolerance to those proteins. He has a history of inflammation in his gut and in his joints, as well as um, allergies. Hmm. Uh, hunters. Do you know any local hunters? I don't. I know someone who knows local hunters. Actually, that's a lie. My neighbor hunts, but he only um, hunts, you know, you have a license, you can only shoot um, and kill one animal and he gets enough to feed his family and he rarely has anything left over. But when he does, I am on hand to take it. But when it comes to the hunters, they're not eating the entire animal. So what are they doing with what they don't want to eat? See if you can get a hold of that. And a lot of times they'll either sell it to you for cheap. I know someone that's getting it for 50 cents a pound or free. So definitely look for hunters. If you're wondering how in the world am I going to find hunters, maybe post an ad on Craigslist, which brings me to Craigslist. You know, there are a lot of people out there who post ads on Craigslist. You can go to Craigslist in your area and just search for raw feeding or raw feeder and find an example of one of those ads. And I'm going to put a link in the notes to my article that shares four examples of ads that I found in my area that you can copy and paste and make your own. But, you know, you can get food from strangers, whether it be, you know, they're doing a freezer dump and they're going to throw away meat that they're not going to use, or it's hunters who have a lot more than they anticipated for and they want to get rid of things. Or this is a really great idea that I heard from another raw feeder is what she does. She lives near an army base. And so when the soldiers are deployed or going to move, be moving to another base, they have to get rid of everything. And so they'll post ads to say, hey, come and take everything in my freezer. And she's right there on hand to take it all for free. She gets hundreds and hundreds of pounds of prime cut meat 
tons of variety for her dogs. I mean, how brilliant is that? Um, another idea, farmers. And you know, you can raise your own um, meat. There are a lot of people who do that. I am too much of a chicken and like to name my animals and make them my pets. So I will not be raising them anytime soon. However, I do know a lot of people who raise chickens, who raise goats, who raise cows, who raise a lot of animals and they slaughter those animals to feed their family and their pets. So you can source meat from those people. I have no idea how that would work. So definitely check with a local um, raw feeding group to see what others are doing and how you can get on that jam. Um, Pre-made raw. This is the least expensive raw available. However, for people who have like one or two small dogs, it may be perfectly affordable to have a steady order being delivered to your door or going to the pet store and just picking it up. It's not affordable for me. I do have an order from Darwin's. It comes every five to six weeks and it's just a small order. And it's only because um, I have found that sourcing certain proteins are a lot less expensive when I buy them through Darwin's than when I try and buy them for myself. And um, one protein in particular is lamb, another one is bison tripe. I can't find bison tripe anywhere else. Rodrigo does really well on bison tripe. And then lamb, I can't find it affordably anywhere else. Someone suggested that I buy a slaughtered lamb off of a local farmer and then I can process it and store it myself. Not there yet, but definitely something to keep in mind. So all in all, when it comes to making raw feeding more affordable, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you take a moment, think about your budget, think about how much you wanna spend per month, multiply it by 12 so you can get how much you're gonna spend a year and figure out, you know, what am I comfortable with? What can I afford? What's going to keep me eating a healthy diet and not just eating ramen for you know 12 months and go from there. I know that it can be expensive. There are a lot of people out there that'll tell you, no, no, it's cheap. I'm going to tell you the truth. It can be expensive depending upon where you live. However, there is a way. And this is where the community is so important and why I always stress that we love each other, we be patient with each other, we help each other, we support each other. Because those are the people who are going to be able to share with you what they're doing and maybe you can get in with them to learn more or partner with them on orders or just get great ideas from them. But I hope this was helpful. I have some links below that will give you some more information. And by all means, you know, leave questions in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, like it, share it, follow me on YouTube. I love hearing from my followers. Check out my blog, keepthetailwagging.com. And I hope you find um, a really great way to save money on raw feeding. Because if you do, and I didn't mention it in this video, please share it in the comments because I'm always looking for something new. Talk to you soon.